Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here with the Raptors Digest, reacting the Toronto Raptors 105-106 loss to the Brooklyn Nets. And, you know, this game's this game's a tough one. Obviously, Brooklyn, not one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference. 9-18, and 18. They, they had a solid start to the season. They got some talent on their roster. You know, we don't want to make them sound like a, a completely tanking and abysmal roster. They have some good players, but, you know, by no means a, a top-tier team in the league. You know, we come out here, lose in overtime, and it, it hurts to watch drop these games. Obviously, it's a game in mid-December. We can't overreact to anything like this. This doesn't change my perception on the team at all, uh, even though we do have some issues that I've talked about on the season. I'll highlight some more of them tonight. But, you know, we only lost by one point. It's not like we got blown out. There's, there's some problems with the team that have been there the whole season. They were very magnified tonight. But... You know, got to give credit before I talk about the Raptors and the things that, that happened in this game. Got to give credit to the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, D'Angelo Russell played a phenomenal game. 29 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds, some clutch shots in OT. He's a solid NBA player. He's inconsistent and, you know, he's kind of all over the place in games. You never know what you're going to get out of him. But tonight, when he's cooking, he's on fire and he had a great game. Spencer Dinwiddie, one of the most underrated players in the league. Probably got fouled on the potential game winner. You know, I got to give credit where credit is due. And, you know, when we were a poor, you know, a, a less respected team, you know, not maybe not necessarily poor, but when we were a less respected team, we didn't really get the calls. And tonight Kawhi was guarding him and probably fouled Spencer Dinwiddie at the end of the game. So I just want to, you know, give the Nets some credit to start this game because I'm going to bash on the Raptors. I don't want to make it sound like the Nets weren't a reason why they won. You know, the Nets deserved this win. They came out and played very fiery. But the Toronto Raptors definitely had some errors, and this is a Toronto Raptors podcast, so we're just going to get right into it. I usually start with positives, and I'll do that again. You know, Kawhi Leonard was phenomenal tonight. Missed a few shots down the stretch, but otherwise, you know, 32 points, three rebounds, four assists, ridiculous defense, four steals. Kawhi's a beast. We all know that. We we talk about Kawhi seemingly on every pod. Absolute monster. Jonas Valanciunas, especially in the first half, you know, the first three quarters, phenomenal game, 24 points, eight rebounds. Our center position has been great this year, 10 of 15 from the field. You know, Pascal Siakam was also pretty solid tonight, 16 points. Not the greatest field goal percentage, 6 of 15, but, you know, Pascal Siakam is, if it's not an all-star caliber, it's definitely up there. It's definitely a very solid season for him. But we lost, and we lost to the Nets. So there's there's definitely some issues there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get right into him. Kyle Lowry. You know, he does a phenomenal job at facilitating Kyle Lowry, no matter how bad he is on offense, how bad he is at putting the ball in the hoop. He's always going to be on a plus on the court because he does everything else. But if he doesn't have that in his repertoire, you know, because if he if the Raptors don't need him to score, if the Raptors don't need him to be a threat, he can do that. You know, he can be passive. He can pass the ball to Kawhi Siakam all he wants. And a few games he did that on purpose this season. You know, we saw it. He hit a few shots and he would purposely not take that many shots. Because Kawhi and all them were cooking and we have a lead and all that sort of stuff. That's not the case right now with Kyle Lowry. That hasn't been the case the past few games. Because he's just settling for way too many three-point shots and he's in a shooting slump. Kyle Lowry is such a good slasher. He can get to the rim. He's a bulldog. Right? He can score in other ways than the three-point shot. But tonight, one for eight from the field and one for seven from the three-point line. Seven of his eight shots were from three. And he's not shooting at a high clip. If you're struggling, get in a rhythm. You know, go to the rim, do things that you're capable of doing. You know, if he was a guy that was a one-dimensional three-point shooter, and there's a few players like that in the league, then you say, shoot your way out of it, because you're just a three-point shooter, that's how it goes. But Kyle Lowry's an all-star, because he can do other things. He can score in multiple ways. And, you know, he's he's just taking hesitating threes, you know, because he's this confidence is gone right now. You know, I'm sure it will come back. You know, I don't want to overreact and think Kyle Lowry's trash and let's trade him. But right now, you know, his confidence is not there and he, he just keeps settling for shots. You know, he's completely wide open. But if he gets to the rim, I'm telling you, if Kyle Lowry just gets a little groove going, gets his mental space back, he'll be fine. It's not like you go from one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA to what he's shooting like now overnight. That's not what happens to players, regard, you know, unless it's an injury like faults or something like that. But that's not the case for Kyle Lowry. And I know he's mentioned after the game that he knows he's playing passive and he's aware to it and he's got to be more aggressive. And I agree with that, but not only in just looking for a shot, I'm saying he has to be more aggressive and go into the rim. You know, the past few seasons, we've seen Kyle Lowry go through spurts. Because, you know, if you look at Kyle Lowry from, especially that 2016 year, because I think objectively that's been his best season. You know, that year he had similar numbers to the Deep Rose MVP year. Ridiculous, carried this team. We made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, all that stuff. You remember that 2016 years? Probably my favorite year of Raptors basketball so far. I'm hoping this year overtakes it. 
regardless. You know, Kyle Lowry is our main guy. Kyle Lowry, night in, night out, got us 22 points per game, got us assists, facilitated, and he was always confident in, our, in his jumper, and he would always get us buckets when we needed it. That was the key. You know, he wouldn't necessarily score as much as DeMar, but he'd get us buckets when we needed it because he had that confidence, he had that killer instinct, and he had that star player edge to him. You know, that was Kyle Lowry. That's why he became my favorite player. Then, obviously, the year after, he hurt his wrist and, you know, wasn't the same player coming after that, that that single season. And then, you know, last season, he really took a step back in terms of shooting, you know, shooting the ball on a consistent basis as he let the offense flow and let DeMar run it and all that sort of stuff. I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. But when we need shots, when we need those those moments where we need a bucket, you know, especially when Kawhi's got the defense focused on him because Kawhi's having a solid game. Everyone's going to adjust and focus on only Kawhi. We need that second score. And that's why you see a bunch of people demanding that we trade for Bradley Beal or another guy that can really get us a bucket as a second option score. And, you know, that, that might be a fair point, but I think Kyle Lowry's completely capable of that. I don't think we necessarily need to give up assets to get a Bradley Beal sort of player because I think Kyle Lowry can be that like that. And that might be a homeristic point of view. And I know, obviously, when we lose, and I always give credit to, to players, I always get flamed in the comment section for that. And obviously, I'm self-aware to I'm a Raptors fan, so I'm going to think our players are probably better than they, they are. But I don't think I'm too out of range when I'm talking about Kyle Lowry. I think he's capable of being a guy that can get us a bucket when we need it when Kawhi Leonard is being focused on by the other team. I think Kyle Lowry's capable of being that player, but he just needs to be more aggressive. He needs to be more confident, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. You know, Kawhi Leonard's obviously our best player. There's no debate about that, but we are going to go as Kyle Lowry goes. Not necessarily on him getting us, you know, being that 2016 Kyle Lowry, but we're going to go as his leadership, his engagement his focus and his ability to be a threat on the court we're only going to go as far as that takes us you know because Kawhi is going to be consistent Kawhi is going to give us what he's going to give us but we need that second spark you know Siakam's not there yet I know I'm arguing for him to be an all-star but he's not the second best player on a championship team and that's obviously our goal you know obviously Kyle Lowry can be playing the way he is and we can probably get to the Eastern Conference Finals I'm not worried about that if we want to be a championship caliber team not necessarily beat the Warriors but be that caliber right? We need Kyle Lowry to be the best player he can be. And I think that's possible because he does it every on other every other area of the court, you know, defensively passing. That's all been amped up this season. It's just the shooting. And in my opinion, that's the most important part, but he's shown he can do it in the past. He'll bounce back. I've ranted on Kyle Lowry enough. You know, he, I know it's a slump. I know I say it every pod, but Kyle Lowry will bounce back. Trust me on that. We can't get frustrated over that, but I just wanted to, to get my little rant out there. You know, he's been struggling as of late, and if we want to be the best team in the NBA, we need, we're need we going to go as Kyle Lowry goes. Fred Van Vliet, everything I say about Kyle Lowry, it goes for Fred Van Vliet on a lighter scale. He's a bit better tonight. He's, he's gradually getting better at decision-making, but still his confidence looks a little bit shaken. You know, I remember saying last year on a consistent basis, whenever I saw Fred shoot, I expected it to go in. Regardless of percentages and all that sort of stuff, fans of basketball know. Fans can basketball see the eye test. You know, they know it's a real thing. And when you saw Fred Van Vliet, you just felt, you felt confident. You felt confident that the shot was going to go in, and everyone on the court felt confident it was going to go in. And, you know, everyone felt confident when you're on the court with Fred Van Vliet. That's why he closed so many games for us. And that confidence is just not there this season. It's just not there. I can't put my word on it. I, I wish there was something to describe that, but it hasn't been the case. Fred Van Vliet, we need you. You know, you played well at the end of that Sixers game, which was phenomenal. And I gave you credit. I said the bench mob was back. Tonight, we need that We need that swagger. We need that edge. Fred, I'm begging you. Please, please be the leader of the mob once again. DeLon Wright, not the greatest night tonight. You know, we'll get into DeLon Wright after. OG Ananobi. Still struggling. We're waiting for him to bounce back. And Serge Ibaka, we can't hate on Serge because arguably, besides Kawhi Leonard, he's probably been our most consistent player of the season. And he he, he was fine tonight. I'm not going to trash on him. He had a couple blocks, eight rebounds, or 8.6 rebounds, 20 minutes of action. Jonas played really well, so it's tough for Serge to get in there. Uh, yeah, it was the mob really didn't have it there tonight. CJ, once again, not doing nothing. You know, uh, Danny Green didn't have the shots tonight. He only took one shot. One three, sorry, two shots. So I want to see if, especially if the offense is struggling, you know, it wasn't awful tonight. We didn't play horrible, but we were playing the Brooklyn Nets, and we want to be able to burst the burst the game open. Wouldn't mind seeing Danny Green get some more shots. I don't know it just sucks when we lose these sorts of games. 
you know, it, it sucks. We we got to, and they're close games too. It's not like we're getting blown out. We, we got to be able to execute down the stretch. We got to be able to, you know, the execution was actually fine. We got some really good shots for Kawhi. He had a really good game, just missed missed a couple shots. And even and if we won this game, people wouldn't be sad. You know, if Kawhi hits that shot, we're, we're chilling, just like the Orlando game a few, few days ago. But there's certainly some issues that we need to iron out. And also, defensive rebounding is atrocious. And it sucks because Jonas is our best defensive rebounder, but he's our worst pick-and-roll defender. Because uh, to close out the game, we were running a lineup with Pascal Siakam at center, which was was pretty interesting. I, re- I really enjoyed the lineup, and it played really well. You know, offensively, it was pretty good. Obviously, no one could shoot tonight, so, like, every night, honestly. But uh, <laughs> but I, I think that lineup was pretty cool, and it was great to see. But Jared Allen kind of got a few easy buckets off it. But then we subbed in Jonas at the start of the, the overtime period, and he had such a good game tonight. I was surprised he didn't get more run, but... You know, he gets burned in the pick and roll. We saw D'Angelo Russell get some open mid-range jumpers. I guess Jonas didn't. He didn't even do that awful of a job, but you see Jonas backing up. You get the confidence even if he does do a decent closeout. So there, there's a catch-21 there, catch-22, catch-21. I don't even know what – let me know what the phrasing is for that in the comment section below. It's late here. I just, just wrote a chem exam, got a sore throat. I, I apologize if this, this podcast has been rambly. I, you know – this game's. This has been a tough night. It's been a tough night as a Raptors fan. We're just gonna swing it straight into the why you do them like that. Play of the day. We gotta get some positivity, get some energy on this podcast. And you know, overtime period. Kawhi Leonard missed a few shots in a row. Says I gotta, I gotta get a bucket on this possession. Went down to the rim and yammed it down on Jared Allen. It was a really exciting play. Nasty dunk. I like to see Kawhi has had some nasty dunks in his career. They, he's an underrated dunker in the NBA, and obviously he's coming back from injury. So anyone that's come back from injury knows they're you're always a bit hesitant to jump in the air crazy high. Obviously, you know most of us can't jump as high as Kawhi, but it's nice to see him get his legs back under him. You know, get that full confidence to throw down some dunks. Really great to see. But not all plays can be the Kawhi you do him like that play of the day. And some just make you say, "Oh, geez." And tonight, the OG OG's plays of the day. It's going to Delon Wright. Had a couple nice drives. Obviously, DeLon Wright is he's very shifty. He's very shaky. You know, he can cross some people up. He's got that that tall point guard finesse about him. And he got to the rim. And he t- had a couple layups. You know, he's r- usually pretty good at those obscure finishes around the rim. But missed two open layups. I believe it was in the third quarter. If you're missing two open layups, you're definitely making me say, oh, geez. You're making all Raptors fans say, oh, geez. So you're getting the oh, geez play of the day tonight, DeLon. You know, sorry about that, my guy. Got to make those layups. And finally, the Damari Carroll Gold Star Award. I already gave it. You know, I already rambled for about seven minutes on Kyle Lowry. I I gave it to him, but the man himself was in the building tonight. Damari Carroll. Damari Carroll. We play against you. You go four for twelve from the field. He had a couple threes. I'll give him credit. Had eight rebounds, ten points. But uh, he had a pretty bad miss there. He had he bricked it off the side of the backboard. And for a tough game like this, I'm sure you're all a little bit sad about this game. You know, just hope, don't get sad with the Raptors. You know, don't let them impact your your well-being. But your your sports mind is a bit sad that we lost this game. So we gotta we can't give the Demar Carroll St- Gold Star Award to the Raptors or any Raptor player when we're playing against Demar Carroll. So you're getting it, Demar. You know, I hate bagging on you. We we tried to we were thinking about changing the name, but people demanded the Demar Carroll Award stay. But, you know, all love, all love, but you're getting the award tonight, the the self-titled award. Anyways, I've rambled on long enough. You're the best if you've made it this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Really appreciate all you guys, you know, checking in, obviously. It's tough to listen to, to someone talk about the Raptors. It's, it's tough, to, tough to hear a podcast on the Raptors when they lose this game. But, you know, we appreciate you guys checking in after every podcast like genuinely we you, you're the best you know that's not a not a lie it's not a redundant thing i'm saying but yeah you now the raptors will bounce back i'm sure of it even if we got a tough schedule coming up we got a tough stretch of games we're still three point three and a half games above every other team in the eastern conference which, which is great you know the boston celtics are coming back a bit the bucks just lost the warriors we just beat philly so we're still good we lost the nets tough loss but we're chilling Anyways, let me know what you guys think. I'm signing out. Cheers.